Hi everyone, how's it going team here? And this is part four of building desktop products using JavaScript. We are finally at part four after a few live streams. If you've been watching them, uh, then I guess you know most of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about, but there is one important question coming at the end. So even if you watched um, live streams, please do scroll to the end and look at the question because I need your feedback on that. If not, well, then I'm gonna sum up all the live streams for you right here and right now. Um, so we added the uh, first plugin, which is a Crunchyroll API, uh, along with some other stuff to uh, handle the app. So one major thing we did was uh, we took the PouchDB for browser and used it as a database and as our source of state for our React app. So we don't actually have any Redux or anything like that. Uh, because we just don't really need it right now. You know, the just pure database that is tapped in by the components uh, works just fine. So as you can see here, for example, for series, I just uh, wait for changes from database and then map them to state, you know, and that that's all I do. That works perfectly fine in this case. You know, there's no, no need for Redux yet. Um, the other thing we did, we took the uh, Bulma framework, which is a lightweight CSS framework, uh, along with the font awesome, you can see it here. So I will um, paste the link in the description as usual. So this is the Bulma framework. It is a modern CSS framework based on Flexbox. And you know, because we're not restricted by the old browsers or anything like that, because we have late, like one of the latest Chrome's uh, inside of Electron, we can just use a Flexbox as is. And you know, this framework is very easy to use. It looks very nice and has a lot of very cool components. So I thought, why not? And main point, it doesn't require JavaScript. So it works really well with React, even have a pure, um, what do you call it? Pure CSS models. So basically you have to write JavaScript for them yourself, which works again, amazingly well for boots, um, for react, of course, you know, the bootstrap is a bit of a pain in the ass because of their JavaScript dependency. Well, this one doesn't have it. Right. So this is part two. Um, third thing is the Crunchyroll API itself. So um, the thing is that Crunchyroll, in case you don't know, it's a website like pretty much like Netflix that allows you to watch um, videos online. Uh, only in this case, it's not uh, TV shows, it's actually anime. And you know, I watch a lot of anime and I like I'm, I'm a subscriber to the service. The problem is the website is not so good and they don't really have a good desktop app. So that's why I thought it would be good to use it. I think I already talked about that, but whatever. So um, the problem here is that they don't actually have any API for developers. So what I did is I scraped the website. And as you can see here, um, if you are interested in more detailed look into how the scraping works, then you can have again, look at the live streams. But in short, these scraping uh, we did here is super straightforward. So we just loaded the data as an HTML um, as, um, as a plain string. Then we took a library called Cheerio. Uh, again, I will, yep, that is wrong. Cheerio, there we go, Cheerio GS, yes. Uh, so it's a very cool library that is uh, very close to the jQuery and the DOM selector, allows you to run DOM selectors over any string. So basically the idea is that we get this HTML from the um, Crunchyroll, we load it into Cheerio, and then we just run a bunch of selectors. Like, you know, this is the base, this is the group item. So this is the actually uh, serious. And then we can get a title, we can get an image, we can get a video count, and then we can return a nice object that represents that exact series and which we'll uh, then save into database. And then again, from the database, it will actually come here into the React component, and all of that happens on the fly, so it works pretty well. So we got two methods that do scraping, one that gets all the series. I'm actually, you know, the more I look at it, the less I think that it's gonna be useful because there's not that many people who use, like just browse through the series. I mean, sometimes maybe you want that, but nah, we'll see about that. And the second method, which basically takes the um, series page. So, you know, if you open something, uh, then you wanna see the episodes, right? The episode names, episode descriptions, maybe, and stuff like this. I actually don't think we get the episode descriptions yet, so this is one of the things we have to uh, update. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, the episodes are pretty, um, no, we do get a description. So, okay, cool. So yeah, um, and the last method, which gets uh, the episode URL and subtitles, and in this case, type for streaming, 
So currently it's actually based on the YouTube DL tool that I talked about before. So YouTube DL is a command line tool that allows you to download videos from a bunch of websites. And um, the way that I approached this task initially was to try and pipe the output of YouTube DL right into the video tag. Uh, actually, if you do that with, for example, YouTube videos, it works because YouTube videos are encoded in web compatible uh, MP4 format and they're really easy to stream. The problem is that Crunchyroll doesn't use MP4 web compatible format. They use this uh, HTM, HTS, I think is, is HTS, I believe. Was it HTTP live streaming, I think, or something along those lines. Harmonized traffic, no, that's not what I want. Um, let's, let's search HTS video, I think. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> okay, HTTP live streaming video. Yeah, there you go. This is what I'm talking about. So HTTP live streaming is a format, uh, again, by Apple, of course, because all the pain in the ass comes from Apple, as it usually happens. Uh, it, it is still in PAG. It is still, it's, it's basically an M3U playlist with a bunch of uh, fragment files. But the good thing is that since we're using, uh, we don't use the basic um, video tag for playing the video because, you know, that's kind of not very uh, handy. It doesn't have many features like subtitles and everything. We're actually using video.js. Uh, again, the link for the library will be in the description this. Uh, so this is a nice video framework and I have it cut by my um, JavaScript script removal tool. But you know, if you look at this, you will, hey, that is a bit too loud. You will actually see that, you know, it has a nice UI. It has advanced, um, plugin support, playlists, subtitles, whatever you can imagine. And what is important for us, it has this um, HL, I think it's, yeah, there, there you go. So there is a video.js contrib plugin, which adds the HLS support for videos. And it's even, uh, so basically the cool thing about it, it, if browser can do that natively, it will do that natively. If browser cannot do that natively, it will fall back to flash support. In our case, flash support doesn't really matter because uh, Electron is available to do that uh, natively. So we can actually just throw in the URL and type and it will just stream it. And this is the point where I'm like, okay, maybe we don't even need the um, YouTube DL in this case, because for right now, all we do is to scrape the URL from there, which we can do ourselves and scrape the uh, subtitles, which again, I think we should be able to do ourselves. We just need to have a look at the source code of the page. But you know, since YouTube DL does this, we should be able to do that ourselves as well, which means we can throw out all the dependencies and just work with the pure data, which is always great. No need to force a user to install anything or to bundle, you know, large binaries with our app. So yeah, here you go. I can uh, demonstrate the app. Um, it's still called Hello World because I'm too lazy. So this is what we get once we load it. As you can see here, this is the most popular um, animes that are currently on the front page. So and if you select them, the anime, you will see the episodes of this anime. And if you select the episode, uh, it will actually right now this takes quite some time because it downloads the subtitles to your hard drive, which is kind of, uh, but you know, this was the quick hacky prototype way of doing that, so to say. So it, it does take a few seconds to load, but I think if we throw out the YouTube DL and, um, whoop, and let me mute that. Uh, we, if we throw out the YouTube DL and actually just scrape it ourselves, then first of all, we won't have any problems with um, uh, Fetch API because it tries to use the Fetch API first and it doesn't work with files. So as you can see here, it just says, hey, I cannot fetch your local uh, subtitles file. Uh, and we could just fetch remote one and it will work absolutely fine, I think, unless they have the course policies, but we'll have to look in that. Uh, if not, we can just proxy it locally. But as you can see, you know, we can play video, it shows subtitles and, you know, it even allows you to scroll through it, whatever you like, and it works great. So, and you can go back, of course, and all of that stuff works perfectly fine. So yeah, we are at stage um, that we have implemented the first very basic uh, support for um, video source. And here's the question. So we can take uh, two approaches here. Let me not close that because I need to paste it in the video. So two approaches would be, and this is where is the question for you essentially. Uh, so we can either take 
the project and turn it into a Crunchyroll desktop client purely for Crunchyroll, which means we will uh, reverse the rest of their API. Like for example, they have the queue if you log in, they have this um, release calendar, they, we can add notifications for new shows that you have bookmarked, we can add bookmarks, we can add watch percentages because they do have that stuff as well and so on and so forth. Or we can continue going as I suggested. And you know, like, uh, let me just solidify this thought a bit. So basically if we take it and make it the Crunchyroll only experience, this will be more about making the product sort of complete from the terms of UI and UX, right? So user experience will be very important. As again, as I said, I think the website is not exactly best thing ever and it lacks a lot of features and we can implement those features. You know, this, I think that probably will be useful to a lot more people than just me. So we can try to make it very nice and publish it under some very cool name and try to promote it maybe as well and talk about promotion online, I don't know, something like this. Or we can uh, continue going with my original idea and uh, make ad additional sources like YouTube, uh, Netflix, whatever, yeah? But then we would have to trim down on uh, features. So we would be able to only allow common features among all of those platforms. So like release calendar is obviously not a thing anywhere but on Crunchyroll, I think. I don't think Netflix has any. Then uh, bookmarks is not available on YouTube, as far as I know. So there's like watch later thing, but it's not exactly the same. So it's a bit of a pain, you know, and so on and so forth. So the question is, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to do like products or desktop app for one service that will contain all the features? And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of going to dive deep into the reverse engineering of all the features here. Or do you want to go uh, in sort of more a uh, plugin oriented way and to see, you know, how to do more sources and how to homogenize the output, how to make it all look nice from a variety of sources and work with multiple plugins and multiple inputs. Because I think all like both of those tasks are interesting in its own ways. And uh, I personally don't mind doing both. Uh, but the main problem is that actually uh, you guys, uh, who are watching this don't enjoy a long shows, right? So at looking at the, no YouTube, I don't want your messages. So looking at the uh, first um, course that I did, uh, so building products with JavaScript original one, you can actually see that the intro video, I believe has uh, something like, uh, yeah, 4K views and Part one has something among 10K views, 12. Okay, already 12, so. But if we look at the last one, like the conclusions, then uh, there's barely like 300 people got to the end. And that's like, what, 12 episodes? That's not that many. So I don't wanna drag this out. So let's just decide on one. You tell me which one we're gonna reduce the scope a bit and try to finish this in like four or five more episodes. I don't know how many live streams that will take because you know, this like, this is, this is basically R&D work at this point. So we're going to see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, do let me know in the comments which option do you think will fit more if you want to focus on, again, one Crunchyroll desktop client or if you want to see focus on multi-input like data homogenization and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, I guess that will be it for the part four. Uh, as usual, thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.